What's up, fool? What's up, fool? What up, fool? What's up, fool? Podcast live, like every week with Rodrigo Torres right here wearing a yeah man a shirt <laughs> wearing a Pittsburgh Lakers T-shirt. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah man, how to match it though? That's it's weird. Where those colors? Right? Twenty-eight. Uh, Twenty-three. Uh, 23. Yeah. LeBron. Where those colors come from? These ones? Yeah, the black, know. black I and gold. They did it new with the. With the new little merchandise yeah. uh, marketing they, they took out the purple? Yeah. Did you have to order that t-shirt? Because they don't got them, right? They're hard to find now. Dude, the, I got it uh, Foot Locker in Riverside. And Lisa's here right here, chilling. A snow queen. Hello. All the way over there. <laughs> Is that a Mario Brothers, the snow queen? No. No, it's from um, oh, the, no. the kids show. What kid's show? The kid show was a little dog and a little kid that wore that hoodie. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lisa, you're oh, yeah, that one. I don't know the name of it, but the little kid had a backpack with a dog and a golden adventure. Adventure time? Adventure time. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that that's the Ice Princess, I think. Um, Ice Princess. I forget her name. What's up, fool? This week. I'm going to be at Amarillo, Texas, this Friday, August 10th. McAllen, Texas, August 11th. Lubbock, Texas, August 24th. Laredo, Texas, August 25th. Brea, California, August 30th through September 2nd, Labor Day weekend. Check out felipesworld.com slash tour for all upcoming shows and ticket information. This week on the podcast... We have Lana Turner. She is the wife of the late comedian Ralphie May. And she's also been a guest in the past. And she'll be on later on. And maybe she'll sing that song, Mayonnaise. <laughs> What's up, fool? We what didn't up? get to talk about it last week, but. Is Johnny coming? I thought he was going to show up. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I, I, <he. laughs> You should just call him right now. Come, give me your phone. <laughs> but wait, what were you going to say? You didn't get to talk about it last time, what? Or do you want to bring that up? Oh, that we went to, uh, we, what's up, listeners on Facebook? We went to um, to go check out um, Lucha Vaboom. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was awesome, man. A lot of guys out there looking, a lot of guys, wrestlers out there with, me, with mascaras and shit. Mm-hmm. And they had a burlesque. I had a badass burlesque dancer in that one girl. She was really this girl cool. dancing on a pole, a floating pole. A floating pole. pole. I've never seen that. Supported by the ceiling. Lock, f- lock that fool into the microphone right here. <laughs> they don't have the connection, dude. We don't have a connection right now. You can do it on speaker, though. Yeah. Just hold it up to your mic. All right. We're calling Johnny Rocky right now. Supposed to be here. <laughs> Unless you want to put it into this one so you don't have to. Oh, you do? For the iPhone? The, the new one, the, the little, uh, the different one. The oh, I don't have that. All right. Oh, What's up? Well, where you at, dog? Um, I have to go. I thought you're supposed to be on the podcast today, dog. Oh yeah, but I wasn't sure what time. I thought it was about two or something. Bro, it's been noon for the last three and a half years, bro. <laughs> oh, it's been twelve, dog. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> What? One time, man. Ooh, what are you talking about, though? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? It was at noon, bro. First of all, if somebody invites a podcast, you ask immediately at what time. <laughs> you don't wait a year and then ask later, hey, what's on the podcast? There you go. Oh, but if Nick Garrett would have asked you, bro, you would have said, what time, Nick? <laughs> stupid. What time? Well, should I be there, honey? <laughs> all right, dude, we're starting a podcast. Johnny's not going to be here, people. He's too busy getting another hickey. <laughs> this already, like, late, though. What's up, fool? That's it, eh? It's going to be the three of us. Oh. Who forgot. <laughs> First of all, man, if you're asking, if somebody invites you to go somewhere or be on a podcast, you should ask immediately what time should I be there. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, I was never told what time, so. <laughs> well, but wasn't he standing right there when I told you yeah. we're having Lana? You guys are at the driveway, the end of the I, driveway, right? I, I, I heard the same thing. <laughs> at noon. At noon. Because I asked you if we were going to do it at noon. Yeah, yeah, at noon. Mm -hmm. You know. He must have been standing on his head or something. (laughs) Doing some yoga. Went from uh, Johnny Handsome to Johnny Come Lately. Because I know if somebody invites me somewhere, but I I don't want to go, I don't even ask for what time it is. (laughs) 
Yeah, it, you it, are it, like that. Felipe, are you gonna go do that thing? Yeah, bro, I am. And then, dude, I know, I know what day it is. But then when I get that call, oh, it's right now. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was at nighttime. You, uh, you paid no mind. For a lot of ple- people, a lot of people are fooled by Felipe, and they think that he's just flying by the seat of his pants and isn't paying attention to stuff. But Not he right. knows. You've all, all been fooled. It's, it's all calculated. You've all been fooled. Eh? So what's up, fool? Where were we last week? Um, Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Florida. We were in Jacksonville, Florida, man. It was humid as a motherfucker. <laughs> George showed up, bro. George. Colin George's Disney. cousin. What's going on? The big one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the big one. What up? Well, shout out to all these people. With Gabriel the Garza. George Kodinsky showed up. Oh, shit, dude. This is my homie right here, dog. Who? From the projects. Joe Chaparro, bro. Who's that fool? Joello, bro. <laughs> Joello, though. From Flats. Oh, shit. Big four flats, I guess. Yeah. He's cool, bro. That, I grew up with that guy. We were in a summer camp and shit. Dude, <laughs> this guy, I saw one time, like, I was never, like, he was cool with me, right? But I knew this fool could fight, but uh-huh. he, he kind of, like, didn't look like he could fight, but he could fight. And get him in. And um, I saw him one time. I was coming home, and... Okay. I was coming home, <laughs> and there was this big black dude in him, and ready to go at it. Ready to go at it, and they put a quarter on his shoulder, like knocked on my shoulder or whatever. And the fighter star back in the days. Oh, I remember put, that. It's like a, a duel. A sort duel. Of. It's like a slap in the face like, for a duel. Be, they'll put a little stick right here, like, oh shit, you want to fight? As soon as it falls, it's yeah, like, so knock that, it off my shoulder. So the other fool yeah. has one too, right? And the first, like that fool, knock it down. And this guy will knock it down. But if like the person knocks it down, so dude. This black dude, I think his name was Junior or Lawrence Moore. I don't know. I don't want to say his real name. <laughs> right, right, right. He's my friend Two on Facebook, names. too. So, <laughs> that fool went like this to Joalo. But it was a quarter. Uh-huh. And then Joalo just punched that fool in the face. But it was inside the gym, dude. Like, it wasn't even outside. And I said, well, I get it. It's not a good day to play basketball today. And I fucking laughed, eh? I said, fuck that. I don't want to be next. Well, Joalo, I don't know if you're listening, bro. Do you remember that? Oh, that fool said he started clapping. Yeah, he said he does. <laughs> Clap emoji. Shout out to Joel. We have Lana Turner right here. What up? Hello. Oh, my God. Felipe, I got to give you a hug. I haven't seen you in so long. What up? Oh, I didn't know the wedding probably. I think so. Maybe. Let me get your water. Has it been that? I think maybe not. No, I think we saw it at the last time she did the podcast. What? Uh, old studios rally? Mm-hmm. So good to see you guys. Likewise. <laughs> Shout out to Becca <laughs> Lee Esparza. 36 listeners, man. Well, so where were you at? You were in um, um, Jacksonville, right? The yeah. Comedy Zone? You went to the Comedy Zone before? Yeah. In Jacksonville? Yeah. That's the place with the hotel room yeah. and everything together, right? I don't know. Okay, is that the one? Um, in the hotel. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've done the, that several walk, times. When you walk into the lobby, the comedy club is to the right, the lobby to the left, yeah. and then Gigi's Italian restaurant buffet is in the front. Oh, I don't know that I've experienced Gigi's. Or Gigi, or Gigi, Gigi right? That's what Gigi. it's called. Gigi? Gigi. But it... <laughs> and, it felt that club felt like do, doing a, a a comedy show instead of a, 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 a boat, yeah, a cruise ship, bro. It, because you couldn't get away from the half of the people after the show, dude. It, like, I don't want to <laughs> see you having sex in a swimming pool when I'm walking back to my uh, my hotel room all high. A lot of people saying what's up on Thursday from Saturday or Saturday from Thursday. <laughs> So do a lot of people stay there? Yeah. yeah. Really? So it's like a destination uh, thing. They have That's a lot of hilarious. stuff going on at this hotel, though. They've got a stuff. huge I buffet. they got a lounge. they got a comedy club. they got something else, right? They have, um, they have swimming. Oh, well, something else, though. It was like, Another but it has like a, it's like a high-end buffet, though, right? Lobster, crab legs, stuff like that. They have that. a mystery theater, too. You find out you, the mystery Wait, is you gotta find out who fucked in the swimming pool. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I don't remember this this being <laughs> a, DNA is this? a nice uh, like no, I didn't, I didn't say it was nice. Yeah. I just said they had a lot had, of stuff everything going, going on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude, it was really it was way more humid in Orlando, dude. If you gotta <laughs> listen to the rest of the show, go to youtube.com slash atc, okay? Slash atc. Or go to Facebook. I'll go to I'm Facebook. Put it on Facebook. I'll right turn now. it off. I'll turn it. I'll turn it on Facebook. That was where. Instagram? That was my, my faith page. 
My Facebook page. Personal. Oh, Personal. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Too much stuff. Going so on. you're going next week? No, we were there no, last we were week. Oh, you there. were just we there. there. This weekend. Oh. We were, did, you see, did you see Adam Murray's Adam Murray? He was a yeah. feature comedian. Did you see his, the free food? Sometimes, man, when, when <laughs> we didn't get free food, they act like they're never gonna get free food again, huh? <laughs> I was like, what's the big idea over here? So you, you have four days to do have to get everything <laughs> in one day. This guy had like big old fat. A porter porterhouse steak, uh, yeah. prime rib, and uh, but he likes uh crab legs. I didn't, I don't, I've never eaten so crab, legs. crab legs, and he had oysters. When you're oysters. used to not being treated right on the road, and somebody <laughs> offers you free food, it doesn't matter if it's a plate of fried grossness. You're just like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm, it's free. I'm, it I'm is tripping. Eat. Yeah, it's the greatest. Well, dude, I, I did a show in our, I think it was Tucson, Arizona, and um, before the show, there was a buffet on the side of the stage. It was a good buffet, man. <laughs> they had good food. There was a fake chef right there slicing prime rib. They a had jello. Chef. They had cake. And then they had, then pe people sat down to watch the show and fell asleep. Was that Rascal? <laughs> no, it was in um, Tucson. We were there. The comedy club. It was a, 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 a casino. Oh. Before, when they were setting up, there was like a coffee shop on the side of the stage. What's up, fool? We got Lana Turner right here. Hello. Hello. So, so how was the show last night, bro? Give us some details. Oh, it was killer, dude. It was the best show we had so I far. So it was packed. Yeah, dude. It was it was a good ass turnout, dude. Again, dude, like people came right at eight though, dog. I was <laughs> like, dude, at seven forty five, god damn, dog. I thought I advertised, dog. And then uh Martin showed up early, dude. He with a Hooter. white t shirt with man boobs, bro. <laughs> let it out, eh? Uh but he was dude, he was good, dog. He was dude, he he let it out, dog. It was tight. And um it was me. And Luis Banuelos came. He has a new number, by the way. I'll send it to you. Thank you. Um, and he's like, this is my new number, doc. So he went up there, had new little jokes, get back You're to the game. about the podcast? Oh, hell yeah. What do you all, say? Oh, that, it's crazy, doc. Because <laughs> a lot of guys are telling me, my homeboy said that you mentioned me in the podcast, doc. <laughs> Thanks, doc. I'm like famous, but I'm not, doc. <laughs> you know, his impersonation of Luis sounds a little bit like the Peter, uh, what's his name? Peter Griffith? Peter, um, no, no, no. In, <laughs> in that movie, Murder by Death. Murder by Death I'm with... Um, it, the Chinese guy. Peter Sellers playing the Chinese guy, yeah. the, the Chinese sort of um, detective. Yeah. That, like, like uh, yeah, like that old Chinese detective. I can't think of his name. But he has this accent. He sounds oh, yeah. a lot like the way you do it. But if you look at him, he looks like one of those... Uh, Luis Bunuelos looks like he could be in an old Kung Fu movie, dog. <laughs> and then... Um, Getting kicked. And then Crampton's uh, cousin was out from New York. He does stand-up. And we gave him a little guest spot, so he was cool. He did good. Crampton? Yeah, Crampton came out, dog. And um, his uh, uh, cousin, uh, what's his name? Peyton McCann from Alaska. Fools related to Sarah Palin, dog. That's his aunt, dog. He did comedy? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, it was good, dude. And uh, yeah. Is that like in his uh, credits? You really <laughs> no, I had to throw it in there. <laughs> um, and then uh, Hooter went up, did a little, little 10 minutes, and then Martin Moreno closed it out with a, a 45. I feel at home here, eh? He said that? <laughs> nah, dog. <laughs> but, uh, he did 45 minutes? Yeah, dog. He did a lot of talking before the punch that huh? This fool. Nah, dude, he was good, dog. Like, he's getting his, like, little shit together, little sex. I, I, I saw him, fucking, um, uh, I, I heard him, um, a little bit. He goes, sensitive people, eh? <laughs> That's all I heard. I sent you that snap, fool. Which was, oh, dude. What? Dog? What's up, fool? A big shout out to Willie Barcetta and his, his kids getting fucked up together now. Oh, uh, <laughs> is that what happened Did on those videos? The, the, the Willie Barcetta, Willie, well, Willie put up a, uh, I, he, I only saw it because Mega Man posted it up, right? <laughs> Mega, Mega Man, Man tagged you on Mega a comment on, on the video. On the yeah. video. Come and over here. It's yeah. Willie Barcetta <laughs> and he's like having a beer. And his two kids are having a beer too, bro. Uh huh. But they're old enough oh, to have so beer. It's so weird, right? though, right? Because we're getting to that point yeah. in our lives now where kids, we, you know, people we knew like 20 years ago, and you're like, oh my God, you got adult kids. Oh, yeah, the kids are like in their 20s. Oh, now. no, it's tripping me up. Totally tripping. And, and when they go, hey, all you guys say that don't even hang, have time to hang out with your kids, eh? But I'm thinking, do you have a beer, dog? <laughs> <laughs> they That's actually correct. They all drove something. here. <laughs> And then later on, he apologizes for another video, bro, because oh. somebody was getting mad, I guess, at the video. Uh huh. What did they say? So I don't know. He wasn't really apologizing. He said, "Sorry if I offended any any of you deadbeats who don't want to spend time with your kids." All of a sudden, he's an all-American daddy. <laughs> uh. 
But you get it, but it was funny though, dude. <laughs> Why, dog? Because you know, sooner or later, some uh, wrestling match about to start. <laughs> Spot. You know, after one more beer, there's going to be the wrestling request. Really? What type of cheating on my mom, dog? <laughs> I think Mega Man secretly wants to get choked by Willie, bro. <laughs> hey, dog, he's, he's setting himself up, dude. For real, bro. He wants to be in there, the mix. <laughs> and funny when, people, when he yells out stuff to him and the other comedian yells out stuff to him about the, that we say here, and then Willie has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Oh, dude, they don't even know, dog. You've never said anything bad, dude. Like, oh, shout true. out to the Joe Rogan experience. I was on the show last way, last Tuesday, bro. Yeah, believe wow. me, you were Four great. hours. Yeah, wow, man. good. Four hours. I spoke for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, spoke for, I spoke a lot. It was fun. It was tight, dog. It was cool, man. It was just him <laughs> and I just rapping about boxing and all kinds of shit. This guy had one crazy line. Yeah. Tell me how stoned were you guys? He showed up stolen, man. <laughs> he showed up like somebody. Enough. He showed up like he came from somewhere he working out, and then got tired, so hit a ball, went to work out again, and got tired. So he was tired and high. Yeah, it like he just and came then from he, and then he lit up out. a blunt. I didn't know that fool fuck with blunts. If I would have known, I would have brought, brought you a backwood. <laughs> I gave that fool a pack of OG Louis the Thirteenth, but he wasn't ready, bro. I was like, when is he gonna open that pack? I was waiting, boy? dog. <laughs> Four hours in, man, light one up. Hey, he did. Ro- he did light up a blunt. Yeah, before he got there. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, fuck, dude. I, I didn't even see that. All right. After the show, remember we hung out for another 30 minutes playing pool? Yeah, no. Got re-invited. Hell yeah, dude. Nice. It was tight, dude. But it was cool. A lot of people listen, man. I got a lot of calls. A lot of calls. Nobody called me. A lot of fools were proud. A lot of email me. A lot of emails from uh, people in Australia. Because uh-huh. you know how I mentioned that, uh, that I got into comedy because, well, I got into comedy. But they don't know how to write jokes, Lana. Jane Perret. So I went to the library and asked the librarian. So a lot of librarians hit me up, bro. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That was very <laughs> nice of you to bring up librarians. You know, we're still here, man. Yeah, the a Google librarian in Australia. We're, we're very funny people. They, <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows it because we're very quiet. Yeah, very but, quiet. But we're really, really funny and have dirty, dirty minds. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a big glossary no more, right? That's done, right? The, the Dewey Decimal System, you mean? The yeah. ca- card catalog? Still, yeah. I, I think, think that's some still of them there. I still yeah, think they, they do it. Yeah. That's Not right. everybody's digital. But yeah. how often do they... Do, we're talking about the big old thing with the book. I don't right? know how often they <laughs> update it, but they use the Dewey Decimal System in the computer now. Yeah. I don't job. know about the actual card catalog. There was also updated. a job to get rid of some cards. Huh? Somebody had a job. Man, mm-hmm. if you had a job at the library, bro, not, not inside the library, as a librarian, but the guy out behind the scenes when it's closed, fucking good ass job. The catalog the library, the library guy behind the scenes. You yeah, think? The guy go, uh, <laughs> like the guy that puts everything away. And all that closed. Stuff, yeah. He puts all the books back because he knows where the fucking books go. Dude, that's the kind of job, bro. I would love to just show up a fucking super annihilated. <laughs> like I had a fat ass boy in the parking lot oh, before I go in. I had a job. Like that. <laughs> and then and eat a <laughs> brownie <laughs> and for my lunch. <laughs> and oh, then no. fucking pass and then talk to myself for the next hour, dude. Fuck five yeah. minutes of Freddy over <laughs> and here. Two dog. books get put away. <laughs> People say, like, oh, he's an idiot. He talks to himself. But bro, when you pray, you're talking to yourself too, you asshole. <laughs> so who's crazy? I had a At job like that. At least the person I'm thinking real. Give me a little hint. I had him. to do that. I had to put away. I had to look there for lost <laughs> files in an insurance <laughs> office. Oh, oh that was my murder. Gosh. Shoot me. Yeah, yeah man. when I first moved to LA, I mean, you have to do all kinds of stuff when you first move to LA to just. Like those those type of jobs bring up the the best other people though, man. If they, if they're, they're like if they're like comedians or cartoonists. <laughs> You develop new skills. For real, man. When you decide Th- that you're going to do this or not because oh, yeah. this is death. That like, shit will bring up the yeah. best out of you, man. Yeah. You, you know you're happy. committed. <laughs> yeah, you're miserable enough to be funny. <laughs> it's true. It's the worst parts of your life that make you funny. <laughs> that sucks. That's why we're all so miserable. <laughs> there were two roaches on the side. Hell yeah. yeah. What was the worst job you had? You said, fuck this. The worst job? You fell off the wall. Nah, dude, the worst is just when we used to clean out attics, dude. It'd be hot as hell, dude, just digging out insulation. And then, like, dude, a couple fools falling through the ceiling, dude. And then I have to deal with the customers and getting that shit patched up. And just just the heat, dude. That's Somebody it, dude. fell through the ceiling? Yeah, because, you know, they have the Yeah, rafter, the insulation. Right? Yeah. It, 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 Somebody the, uh, fell. If you, don't follow, if you don't follow the So you rafters, have to follow, yeah. them, follow those. And then sometimes you get a little too comfortable and you forget, forget about it if you haven't been doing that long. Mm-hmm. And they fall through and then the fool gets stuck. Yeah. And then like, dude, but Hussein was a mad improviser. One time uh, we were getting out these bees at this uh, at the library at on Hacienda, and we broke it, dude. Like, uh, it was like a panel. He's like, I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do here, Rod. 
So uh, we put it all back together, but it was still cracked. And then we went to Home Depot and we found this brown silicone that matched it, dog. <laughs> you can even tell, dog. <laughs> kind of like not, that crack filler for wood. Exactly. But, but for it, it would have cost us more to fix that than it would the payment we're going to give for taking care of those bees, dog. <laughs> oh, back to the library. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> okay, microfiche. Well, the worst jobs, though. Yeah, it was. I, I mean, I, it know, was, but. This you white know. girl cleaned houses. <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, yeah. I can, you know, that's a clean pretty up crappy shit, you know? job. That's a crappy job. Yeah. If people are slobs. Oh, yeah. Unless you have those houses that are always clean. Like Adam Murray's house, which we oh my god, it's like a pandemonium. Grossness dog. up, that was. But that. uh, what was your worst job, folks? Oh, it's bad. <laughs> it's gonna be bad. <laughs> oh my worst job, bro! I made them great the next day, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> like I had a job, dude. When, like the dude, man, I don't know if I mentioned this. Father Greg Boyle, he was here. Uh -huh. He got us jobs at the Columbia Pictures or the you know at the studios, and um, there was like. Uh, on, on, I guess under the sets, there's a there's a basement, and right there was all kind of pipe pipes mm -hmm. that were all plastic, and some of them were metal, and they hired us to um, take out all the pipes, fool. So they were gonna bring in new ones, and to, the first day we were screwing them, fuck, this fucking thing forever. But then like I started talking to a lot of people that worked there, right? Like the employees, the real employees, not yeah. the people who hired us. So what's gonna happen here after we get rid of them? Oh, the guy said, fuck that room. They're gonna demolish the whole room and put in new pipes. So what's gonna happen to the pipes right now? The plastic ones, fuck that. They're gonna throw it away. The next day, I told everybody, man, everybody put down the screws, pick up hammers. We're just gonna fuck everything up. They're gonna throw it away anyways. <laughs> so dude, we all picked up hammers instead of screwing out all the pipes that they told us to. Fuck that, dude. We broke everything. A fucking brain smasher. We're done in a week, idiots, bro. No more work after that. No more oh, money. Oh, dude. So you cut it down, dog. I know, bro. I could have just took my time, bro, like a bicep. Bro. <laughs> or union style, dog. Yeah. <laughs> so he was paid. We were standing in line, and this fat white dude who looked like a boss hog, <laughs> but um, Hollywood studio guy, <laughs> he was probably the lowest of the totem pole there, dude. Uh -huh. He was paying us $100.50. 150 in cash. Oh. A day every, each? Every Friday. Oh, okay. This was 1990, bro. So good ass money, dog. So cash, bro. Full with bloody fingers carrying that money, dog. <laughs> Full with, with, with the fucking, with taped up fingers. Didn't go to the hospital grabbing that money. Me, clean ass hand, dude. <laughs> grabbing 150 and grabbing $10 from two other, four other guys because I told them about the job. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wet my beard. Hey, hey, hey. There was four losers, bro, who didn't, who, who, who didn't have shit to do but sell rocks and PCP all day. So I told him, man, listen, man, I know it's a fucking great job, man. And um, most of these fools have money every Friday. They buy, buy drugs. Uh -huh. So, but but uh, uh, you got to pay me ten dollars, dude. I'll get you the job. So I got every day, every Friday, these fools, four fools, would give me ten dollars each. So that's I was making two hundred dollars, dog. For what finder's <laughs> fee? Finder's fee for the job. Just every Friday, you you tax those same people. Yeah. Why not just a one-time fee? You got them for every week? There you go, man. That's Damn. Why, that's why you, you, you would have been at home <laughs> doing laundry that's for free. That's not a bad job. <laughs> that's why you'd be, one, you'd be one person. You, you wouldn't be going. I ain't paying every week. You'd be at home job. selling ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> or you will be replaced if you don't give me that you'll be, money. You'll be over there fucking taking care of kids for 25 bucks a week, right? <laughs> but these two are drug dealers already, dude. So that's money. So they're used to the giving a cut for, to they're somebody to else. It, anybody. I, knew, I knew who to get it from. <laughs> Dog. That was a good job, a uh, worst job. That job last three weeks, <laughs> but, but the best part was when they were filming um, Rocky Four, and we saw Rocky, and we saw Sylvester Stallone Corvette. Really? Everybody, <laughs> by way, every, that his whole car was finger, filled with fingerprints. Eh? <laughs> Everybody touching it. Everybody. <laughs> hey, dude, that one dude that you used to work with that you said that you used to always say that's what she said. What job was that for? Uh, Ori, bro. No, that was that was a crazy ass redneck that was living in Rosemead. And that fool was fighting with the city because he had two pigs, dude. Two Vietnamese pigs. <laughs> they weren't gonna let him keep it, so he's trying to keep it. Every day he'll come with the fucking the fucking clown trying to take my fucking pigs. <laughs> <He's clowns. laughs> You're lying, dog. You love the pigs, eh, dog? So that fool that fool even made po that fool made posters <laughs> and go around lying, the whole city and leave, leave leave posters saying, Save the pigs. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Fool. This fool had a, a yard that was too dirty, feet. too probably too dirty, dude. He, cause he had a big, he collected old fire engines, so he had like, like, like he'll see like an old fire engine from the thirties that's on sale for ten G's. He'll just buy it, bro, park it in his yard and never fix it. 
So he had like already he had four fire engines. Get an antique roadshow over here. And he dog. had he, <laughs> he had two pigs running around the house, bro. Hairy little fools, dog. <laughs> what was his wife Vietnamese or something or what? I don't know, dude. No, white. But he was also a white thief, dog. <laughs> <laughs> like he he was a, he was one of the contractors that like if, if he sees another contractor, he'll go there have a conversation with us. He goes, "How about more time? You're having his job. Oh, we have one more day." Tools are gone, dude. Shut up, dog. Who is this swindler, dog? Oh, no, dude. This fool will have a conversation with other contractors all over the building, and they'll find out how many days they have. Like, if they're going to be gone next weekend. You better get them now. So that means the tool, <laughs> somebody's going to come back and get their tool for them before they grab all their tools, dog. But then this Native American dude named, I think, Ronnie, I forgot his name, dude. John Redcorn. He was funny, dog. He was a dick, <laughs> dog. He was a dick, dog. <sighs> That fool, that fool made, he drew that fool off funny with smoking a cigarette <laughs> with two little pigs at the bottom, bro. <laughs> Holding uh, two, uh, uh, all kinds of two boxes, bro. <laughs> and then he, he put, beware. And he put them all <laughs> over, dog. <laughs> Sticky fingers over here, fool. Hey, how'd you link up with that fool, dog? Because I was working for Western Electric. Western Electric was a company that was that was hired during the times when they were selling all the other all the phone companies the the tele the fucking so uh, the, the bells the, the baby bells the baby bells consolidating them into the bigger so p- south pacific AT&T north pacific all west pacific all the pacific were on, under one pacific so when um, they were getting rid of all the phone li- all the phones AT&T started coming in because they were going to have cell phones they saw the future so we were our job was to go in there and slice um Slice phone lines, kill cables, kill cables from people, and yank it all day, ah. all day, bro, all fucking day. We're talking thousands of miles of cable, dude. God damn. Five, four floors, so we'd be in there pulling cable all day. So I met this fool in Melrose, at the Melrose AT and T. He was like, he had his own crew there, a bunch of dudes who didn't work, dog. Plus, this fool's a chain smoker. I never seen a chain smoker, Lana. I'm pretty sure he grew up. With a lot of chain smokers. Yeah, right. This fool run. <laughs> this fool let up a, a more, a more, a more, and dog. then turn it off, and then the next he put a brand new cigarette and light it with an old cigarette. Oh. Yeah, you don't turn it off first. You don't. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll you don't light turn it, it off. first, and then you light up out, the next yeah. cigarette. Then you turn it off. Keep the chain going. And this back then when you could smoke <laughs> in a fucking green room, bro. And then that fool will say that's what she said for everything, bro. <laughs> Us that story, there, was this, there were these two women They were talking about Something downstairs And we were up there right And he goes yeah She goes yeah man I'm having a really hard time Getting up this morning And I pulled up there. That's what she said <laughs> And farts bro God. And farts bro And then the, the fucking fart Will go down Because the AC is up there uh. So the AC is hitting us And it's hitting the ground So that fart will carry That, that fucking AC Will carry the fart what down What a lo- oh lovely God, person dude. <laughs> he was a damn dude. That fool got mad though when they I put the beware signs. <laughs> <laughs> they outed his ass. They, yeah. they, the city put the sign? Or I thought you said he An put employee, the sign. That no, some other that employee. Oh. Guy. The oh. worker. It That's was so funny, nice. dude. It was, it was, it was, that fool will see a tool on man, he'll grab it, bro. Really? And just put it Anything. in the collection? A whole toolbox. If it don't got your name, it has his name now. Fucking magnet, huh? And so you were at Melrose working for that other one. And how'd you, how'd you run into him? How'd you start talking he, to him? He that worked fool? for Western Electric too. Okay. So they put it all, all the lazy crews together in one place. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one and of you guys say, will be a leader. <laughs> yeah, I see a leader anymore. <laughs> but these guys were all like white boys from, I don't know, from Rosemead area, I guess. Really? With, with lazy fool dogs. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I guess Rosemead had white boys back then, back, back in the days, dog. Oh, dude. And this other dude that worked there, him and I would, would take a lunch, and he'll, he'll take out a fat stress joint, dude, and we'll smoke it. And it's funny the whole time, like I didn't even know that back then that the Merrill's improv was just right there. Really? And, and I didn't want to be a comedian. If I would have known, bro, I would have just went for the open mic and invited <laughs> Ori that, or that fool of still tools <laughs> for the fucking improv. His name was Ori, that fool? I think his name was Ori. What did he look like, fool? Dude. <laughs> he looked short, short, red headed, old white dude, big ass beer belly, bro, with little arms. <laughs> and. Like Yosemite Sam, bro. <laughs> and he had blue eyes. And his mother, his mother grew up in Compton. Damn, like South Central area, day. back in the days. And his mom, every sat, every day, still went to leave flowers for that fool. 
Really? Hell yeah. She grew up in the old days, bro. The old days when you made a lunch for your fucking husband and you leave him a little note. Aw. Yeah, I do that sometimes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a little note. Wow, dude. Fucking Ori, dog. What's up, boo? We got Lana Turner right here. Hell yeah. Felipe. What you got going, man? Oh, uh, so much. <laughs> How's the kids? The kids are good. Sorry about Ralphie Mae. Yeah, that sucks. Right? Hell yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Little, that's her daughter, bro. Do you remember little, Ap- little August and April, right? April. Yeah. April, May. Th- April, May. They're big. They're nine and ten now. Last time oh. I seen him was at your wedding. She was dancing yeah. her ass off with Lisa and everybody. Yes, yeah. she. <laughs> she didn't want to leave. She did not. She is a party animal. <laughs> she want. She get down at a party. Yeah. I love when kids get down at parties like that. Like this dancing involved. I like them when they when they start dancing too and oh get yeah, all sweaty. Cool. Yeah. Do you know why when they get home crash? <laughs> yeah. She was all sweaty and she came up <laughs> to me and she said. We have to go. You were oh, you're a princess. Like, she you're was like wiping her face off. She's all sweaty. Yeah. No, they, they had a blast. Your wedding was beautiful. Yeah, it was thank a beautiful, you. beautiful day. Yeah, that's God, how many years has that been? Now? Almost four. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Yeah. That's wow. so much has yeah. changed in four years. Yeah, I, know. I had no idea that I was at a wedding and that I'd soon not be married. <laughs> well, I never got married. Well you not mentioned married, it here on the, you, you were like you were you were here on You were here on your anniversary. On your anniversary on our podcast. On the oh podcast, gosh. the tenth anniversary, I think, of your wedding. And I think there were already kind of hints already that things well, weren't he, going so he well. You filed and then I He filed, no, you filed. Everybody thinks it was me. It was not me, Felipe. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know then. He filed twice. So here's the thing. It's such a sad story. Like it's very sad. He was really sick. You know, he was really sick. He was struggling. Um, and I went to um, Madison, Wisconsin, and he was coming off of a gnarly oxycodone withdrawal, and he wasn't in Oxycodone? his right state of mind. I think it was not for the pain for the knees. Or was he taking that before? I mean, you know, when he had pulmonary embolisms, it all. It, it was everything. Oh, he had that he, before he had pneumonia and everything? He oh, had, yeah. He oh. had the embolisms, God, I, over 10 years ago oh, now. Wow. So after that, they took him off weed because his lungs couldn't take weed. But they were like, here's all this other stuff. That's why he stopped with smoking weed, huh? Just edibles on? Well, he went back to weed. But his lungs, you know, were never the same because when you pass those clots through your lungs, it destroys them. Yeah. And he should never have taken up weed again. But they also you know that he got hooked on all that other stuff so he did a couple of stints in rehab it was a mess for seven years he was in and out of hospitals and rehabs 11 times in seven years while we were still together and yeah. that last time when i found the pills i didn't know he was back on pills i should have known because all the signs were there but i i'm ignorant and uh i found them and i i was scared for myself and the kids because he wasn't in his right normal ralphie sweetheart state of mind that we all know and that's him he's the sweetheart but this was not him and so I took the kids and we went home. And that week that followed, he filed um, with people that soon became his management. They weren't his management before. Isn't that crazy? Crazy. So he so filed with attorneys he filed who became his manager. No, he no. filed with fr- a, a friend and then oh, his friend. who became his manager. So that person just did the paperwork for him. No, and he took him to the divorce attorney really? and oh. then became his manager. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so that was a big mess because I don't think he had his best interest at heart. So Ralphie actually unfiled because I was like, "Why did you do that?" It was devastating. Um, and then he refiled. A, a little bit later in secrecy he didn't tell me he'd refiled but i'm a woman and i have a sick sense and i <laughs> i i did a little research and i found because the thing about divorce is like there's this whole <laughs> who files first thing and there's all this bullshit like it's like you're it's all this legal stuff that should not enter into a union between two people who make kids and love each other but anyways i found out about his filing and then i filed in california because this is where the kids and i and him were living all those years even though we had a second residency in tennessee and when that happened, TMZ reported that I filed for divorce because they look for the filings here. So I was only responding to him. And that's how everybody thinks that I filed for divorce, which I never would have. I never would have left him, which in hindsight I should have, but I wouldn't have. That's crazy that Ralphie would file for ch- for um, divorce that messed up. Man, when I was fucking coked out dude, for three days, I bought a fucking stolen car from somebody. But I didn't even know. He didn't even think it might be. I didn't even think about it. I just, just thought it was a good deal, right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so then I, I, filled, I filled out the paperwork, and I said, yeah, I'll give you the money later. But then I passed out, and then if he wanted the money, he was threatening me. And I said, listen, man, you got to do all that. You know, 
I, I, we made a deal. I signed the paperwork. I'm gonna give you the money. He goes, don't worry about it. Oh my god. He gosh. goes, it's, it's, you know, but, but in my head, I'm thinking, you know, it's my negligence, you know. Yeah. I'm not gonna fight this guy or you know or whatever it is, you know. It's a mistake, you know. But I, I give him the money. But the car was straight up stolen, dude. I, I mean, I, I, well, I didn't, you didn't know for sure, yeah. but I, when you told me you bought a car for five hundred bucks cash <sighs> the night before, and you had the title, I was like, How'd wait you get a minute. The title? Yeah. Was How'd you well, they on? had the title, but it was this Chinese man's name, this and this Buddhist guy who guy. sold it to you was not Chinese. And but he had the title. In the but car. he had the title. He stole the car with the title. The in guy it. might have had his like title in the, in the car. Some people do. Yeah, that. Yeah, some people do yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. And he's a, he's an old Bo- he's Chinese an old, immigrant. Yeah. Well, you know those Buddhist, the Buddhist temple that's over where his Off old. First? No, on Boylston and like Temple. There's a Buddhist temple right there. Yeah. Big Buddhist house. Well, right up the street is where this guy lived, and he might have been one of those guys, and just didn't really realize he's got to protect had the himself. Car had the but keys and everything. It, yeah. it, he had everything. Those, those guys he, are very he, trustworthy he of each all, other. He was yeah. all Buddhist about it, and now he's got to fight to get his car back. When you're not in your right state of mind, right. they sell you something like that. The contract could be void under uncontrolled. But it wasn't yeah. that guy. Yeah. yeah. It was some and it's Latino void guy. It was some anyway. guy you were partying with, it was wasn't it? Crazy cholo. Yeah. It was like 500 bucks. So when you're never gonna see again. Yeah. So when he told me that, I was just like, look, you lost. 500 bucks but you got to take this car back this yeah. is hot so we um because it had his name on it and like nothing else and no other information and then we found his registration i think and then we just yeah. ended up dropping the car off the car off back in, 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 in front of his house in front of his house <laughs> <laughs> lost uh, everything in that there. is so buddhist of him he was like it's just gonna come back to me so i, I got <laughs> the, <laughs> I got the good karma yeah, yeah. that's so, so funny scandalous selling but stolen cars that's eh? so like Weird. you're so whacked <laughs> out that you can do the craziest things but that's stupid yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. the right state of mind no like that and then later on like <laughs> later on i'm sure just so go fuck up this dude. I said, nah. For what? Then that fool got problems. Two, three, I think a week later, that fool got um, he got he went to jail for five years for assaulting somebody. Oh. See you later, dog. Later, dog. Yeah, but <laughs> that's crazy that you were like. So Ralph so not Ralph Miller was not all there, right? When when all this going on. No, no, no. I mean, he wasn't. But here's what's so crazy about all of this: it's all on, ca- not all of it, but a lot of it was recorded on camera. Because you guys were doing a reality show. No, we had started a documentary. So nine months prior, almost a year prior, Ralphie had wanted to get lap band surgery, and I was dead against it because he'd already had two stomach surgeries. He'd had a, sta- a stapling before I met him, and then after last comic, he got gastric bypass. So when I met him, you guys remember he was eight hundred pounds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then he got down when we got married. He was about four thirty, and it was looking like he, he was, was good in your the engagement leg. party. He was great. What was he, that, three, 380? No, he was probably 450, 430, somewhere in there, because he had done uh, the gastric bypass. And he was standing, he was good. He was doing good. And that's why I, I, told, I never didn't believe in Rafi's ability to overcome his, his issues with, but it's all substance abuse, whether it's food. It just switches to different things in your, when you, uh, that's addiction, right? So like, anyways, so we st- when he said he wanted to do the lap band, I was I told him at that time I said I don't think you're going to be alive in two years if we don't do something drastic. So I'm like we could put duct tape or we could continue to cut your tummy up. And he wanted to do the the lap band. So um, in starting that, I got my friend. Do you know Kat Reinhardt? So she was she did uh, the podcast with you for a while, right? She's After, amazing. Uh-huh. She was the one who followed him around, right? She was the one documenting him. Yeah, because I saw he, he he walked in with her. She's like little punk we're, girl. Yeah, or, we're or doing like um, Skyler Stone show one time, and it was, it was at the comedy store. I was shot, shot up, throw a name, but it was a lot of comedians there. That's the last time we saw him. That's the last time we saw mm-hmm. him. He came in, and we were all hanging out in the green room. And Joy was there, and um, he didn't. Ralphie May went up, and then he took off from the store. That might have been. Yeah, and, and she and was Kat shooting was everything. Yeah. Was so the there's, store, yeah. I, yeah. So that's one of the last times and she we was shot. filming a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. So you guys know. So Cat was filming this like nine month window and what happened during that nine months was I kind of started to realize that things were never going to change he didn't qualify for the lap band and he was supposed and I was kind of happy when he didn't qualify for it because I was like great now you get to do it on your own the camera's on him the pressure's there we're going to get this weight off you finally and you're going to be okay what made him a bad candidate for it He'd had two surgeries. His, health, his other health problems. No, he'd had two oh. surgeries, and I, I mean, I think I don't. Cut up. I don't know. I just don't Sorry. think you know. It's it's not. 
I, I don't care how much you whittle away at somebody's stomach. It's not going to be successful. Yeah. So you, you can't. Because the real problem is it keeps coming back, though, because it's, of his other issues. It's a mental issue yeah. at this point. It's a, it's, it's not the tummy that I mean. The ga gastric bypass restricted his appetite or whatever his ability to eat enough. But even with that, he, when he passed, he was five hundred and ninety pounds. So he plumed at the end of his life, over a hundred pounds. Once I was out of his life, so yeah, but. But yeah, we documented it, which is crazy. So we have, I say we, I, I'm i in it. I did not edit it. I did not shoot it. Kat is responsible for everything. And because I'm a subject, so I can't, it would be irresponsible for me to say, I don't like this or I don't like that. Yeah. So it's a really very neutral presentation of what happened during that time period. And the second part about that is that she also shot a lot of his stand-up. So she has this hour and a half movie documenting that year, which is so sad. Um, funny moments, but really sad and beautiful. And then all the stand-up that we couldn't, because you can only sprinkle a little bit of a stand-up in the in the documentary, yeah. is what um, we're doing the is Indiegogo for. It's to try and raise the funds to put together his last one-hour special, utilizing all the stand-up that didn't get used in the documentary. So that's kind of where I, I've been doing the last month is trying to raise more funds for the Indiegogo, because everyone's like, Yolanda, you're rich. No, he didn't leave. I, I'm rich broke. Because I live in the, <laughs> I, I live in my house still. Cash broke. I, I, I live in my Cash house. Broke. I've been able to keep the house, and yeah. and I'm. Ke but the kids. Yeah, that one house here in LA, right? I've kept that. I'm able so far. Knock on wood. He there was two hundred and like eighty eight dollars and twenty two cents in his personal account when he died. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Did so he have a corporation, or did he was he just working by himself? As he a had um, a corporation that had a little bit of money left in it not much but that goes into probate mm -hmm. and his manager the guy that i was saying has sued the estate three times so that's cost a lot of money in probate court because he keeps suing me and he keeps like making it really difficult to like let this man pass and he was his manager for how long um less from the time ralphie left than, me so yeah. less than two years mm -hmm. yeah he's lovely um and so yeah we're just but anyway that's all negative i don't focus on the negative because there's so many positive things to come out of like okay obviously the worst possible thing of all is ralphie and i can't ralphie was on tour right when he passed he wouldn't stop he was constantly working Hell they yeah, worked him he was doing to a vegas thing, I, know, like I, know, I, know, I know that in the last two years he was constantly in that damn bus right. huh? even joe diaz told me to slow down right? every weekend yeah he what wouldn't joe say bro you gotta slow down bro yeah <laughs> He Same couldn't, good. he could, you know what, though, I saw, because, you know, when he passed, I got his emails and everything. There was an email from him begging, like, he was like, I want to, I need to quit the casino. I need to have a break to that dude that I was telling you about. I just don't like this. I'm trying to forgive him, too, and think that he's a sick man as well. He's very sick. Um, but he's like, slow your roll, big boy. That's his answer. Like, here's Ralphie, who's, like, literally dying. He had a residency, right, in the end? Well, yeah, but Ralphie <coughs> had another residency offer for South Point. When Ralph and I were still together, I, I was like, this is the most amazing thing. He could have done just a few dates at South Point. And for the, because South Point's, you guys know, 1,200 seats South Point, right? Mm -hmm. Harrah's 540 seats, I think. He had to work twice as much shows. to do, and for, and then South Point draws in Vegas to the local community. Harrah's has to compete with everything else on the set, for on tourists, the strip. Yeah. So like, they just basically made him work t five times as hard for the same money. It was crazy. I was like, but I wasn't involved in that. I was already out. And I, like he and I weren't even talking at the end. He was so mad at me because I don't know, you leave me. He said things like, I don't know. It's These are the negative things because he would say I kept him from the kids or whatever. And I, ne I never did. I never did. Never, never, never did. Like, well, how could you keep a man from his, I don't know how you keep somebody from their kids. Like it. When did, when did Ralph start taking the oxy? After the pulmonary embolisms, but it wasn't just oxy. I mean, it was Xanax, Percocet. Because I know, like, there were there were there was times when I would think, man, he must be on something to be um, on on Twitter this late in the morning and arguing for yeah, eight on Twitter, hours, just arguing, arguing with on, eight hours yeah. straight with one person. You know, yeah. I would, even even uh, even me as, as coked out as I was, I would like, you know, 
I want to say, fuck this guy. I want to not focus so much on this person. Just Take unfollow. 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 Yeah. Block. block that fool. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. If somebody sends me something negative, just block it out of my life. No, he was. And he, no need for that. Rafi's so. Sometimes s- I say, man, let me tell you, man, I'm over here, man. I'll go, I'll go fuck him up for you. Like, not for <laughs> you. Yeah, we're going to call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, man. Like, it's true. He was so, such a sweetheart. So to see him oftentimes, um, like, kind of just implode on Twitter publicly. I, and again, I there was only so much that <coughs> I could I couldn't do anything at the end. I I like have done a lot of work on me because I think that's all I can do. I'm like was super super codependent. I still am. Like I have Lisa really bad. Was. Was, you are well when when Felipe was going through his addiction. It was you're a codependent. It was tough. It was Th- tough. It's all a cycle, right? Yeah, it's but all what you said too is really what you have to keep remembering. What you said earlier when you said that he was becoming a different Ralphie, not the Ralphie that he really was, you know, the sweet, dear Ralphie, you know, he was becoming something, something else. And you do become this other person. There you it's, go. Well, <laughs> but, but for a while, <laughs> but, but it, you have Lock, to unfollow, <laughs> block. <laughs> but you have to make the distinction as a person who loves an, an addicted person, you have to separate in your mind this is the addict and this is the person I love because otherwise you're constantly trying to save that addict because you think he's going to wise up and realize how much his family loves him, how much his kids mean to him, how much this is really what he needs to get back to. He won't ever realize that once, you know, with that other, with the addiction going strong. You'll never realize that. You don't give a fuck about anything else. Oh, hell no. Nothing (laughs) else. And I know that. And it took me a long time to realize that you are two different people. It's like, it's Jekyll and Hyde. It really is. And it's, mm. it's hard to go through. But, you know, that, and that's why I said I don't ever want to see that person <laughs> again, you know, because I, that person has no part in this relationship. And if it comes up again, I'd, I have to go. You have to leave it. Because you've got to protect you. Yeah, because you, you keep thinking that other person's in there. And I know he's in there, but he's not paying attention right now, you know, like when, oh, you're, when you're loaded. But the, it is a, a, like a completely different person. You know, um, also, I, you can tell me about this because his anger deflected back on to me. Yeah. Like, as if, I almost felt like if, if for one minute, it just it, during any point during the years that, that <coughs> your two year window that followed, if he'd have taken one ounce of personal responsibility about anything, whatever it was, it could have snowballed into a sobriety. But it never ha- addicts just don't do that. If the urge is going strong, there's no personal responsibility. There's no I'm sorry for this. I feel bad about this until it, all the drugs are out. Wow. Right. Oh, right. It's it like, just oh. like it, your system has to be clean to start to realize all that stuff. Yeah. Because otherwise your brain is still seeking out that high. And that's all you care about. When you're spiraling, do you feel like there's because there's other people that come into your life and around that support that. Right. Like when you've been in the dark spots, do you remember like some of the people that were there for you <laughs> during those times that weren't like, do, are you, you weren't able to partying decipher? With them? Do you, are you able to decipher between like somebody who's really there for you and somebody who isn't? Well, like, but, <laughs> is this our go job? ahead, you answer that because I have people, an answer for people that. People who are for, for, for me are my enemies when I'm like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. You well, feel He has that? a whole separate, <clears throat> the thing is with Felipe, he compartmentalizes that. So those people he parties with, Uh huh during his his binges and he hasn't had a binge for it's been nine years now oh wow um the people he parties with during those binges he doesn't want to see their face when he's sober what is it like when you see somebody from that my that stomach th- hurts because <laughs> <laughs> be you like know but you, you're just paying for the parties though. they yeah. won't ha- he won't hang out it, people think i'll get close to him we can hang out and party and all this stuff after that when he gets clean he doesn't want to see hear your voice hear your name you don't want to see your face it's like seeing Jack in a Box in the afternoon yeah. like <laughs> yeah. reminds you of your scandalous like Jack in a Box is cool at 2 in the morning yeah like Jack in a Box is cool a White Castle is cool at 3 in the morning but at noon you're, you're like, like oh come on eat that fucking yeah, like, eat that I don't want to shit rose. myself I'm driving past but he <laughs> fuck const- chicken steak but Felipe <laughs> constantly because addicts are also are manipulative and they can they they say okay I know these people will always lead me down to find the drugs if I need it. I know this person. I'm not going to call this person ever again. <clears throat> but he's ready. But I'm sober, but he's always ready. He's on deck <laughs> he's, if he's, I need it. If I need the stuff. Here, Which even is out of town, you can pick the person who if, you if, can if, get I'm pretty sure with. if you go through photos of, like, uh, photos of me back in the days, I'm pretty sure like... 
a person who knows that I'm a drug addict will pick out the ru- the person that I party with it by the photos. Oh yeah. Okay, this guy, I can see this it guy now. who's never <laughs> this guy that was never there, he's the guy. Yeah. He's the right. guy in the background. He was holding he was he was the guy taking the photos. The one the wearing guy. the Michelin man <laughs> coat. He won't take his Aww. coat off. The guy that dressed up wearing a Donnie Brasco. <laughs> Dude, that one dude that you were hanging out with uh, was living in front of that ugly ass fool dog that holds those holes in his face dog. Oh. He looked like a fucking reptile dog. <laughs> Oh, he was a cracktillion, bro. But he's are you so doing, sick too, dog? right? Like so sick. So it's amazing oh, though. God. Nine years, like it's so hard. For, um, I tried Al-Anon for a little while. I should go back, but like I learned that it's like maybe one in seven gets sober. It's really, really hard. And so also that's those amazing. NA and AA and those things, they have a really low track record. Oh, is like that right? AA is like twenty-five percent success rate. That's about a Mark. Seven, that's, that's a, not yeah. good. That's a seventy-five percent failure. That's about the thing. Maybe there's just not that much success in the disease. I just think in <laughs> general the person has to be ready. <laughs> yeah, the disease is yeah. so yeah. progressed. I I couldn't do Al-Anon. I tried, but I have where it loses me is when they ask for the higher power. I just yeah. have never been able to find any yeah. higher power that I can. I, I try. My higher power is the media. <laughs> My higher power. For would, some people, that's true. Yeah. I think you guys took it from. Yeah, they you wish You have to it. do that by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Man. yeah. It's no program. It's you. Man. It's My you wanting power to. Yeah, brother. because we spent. Cold turkey, dude. There was like this three month <laughs> window where we I had gotten him into rehab, and I would have done anything to get him sober during. I mean, at any point in our marriage, but that was an eighty thousand dollar three month stint wow. in rehab. Three just months, eighty thousand. Eighty thousand uh, dollars in one of these posh Malibu. If I had that much, I would have fucking. I would have kept partying. Yes. <laughs> Trust me. I wish I had that money now. No, I mean... $80,000 for a three-day rehab? Fuck that. Three months. Me money. I'll yeah. kill myself. Seriously. It was crazy. Another fucking sham. Man. Because what are you going to do? Like, I, I had to... I was like, I'm going to force him to do this. And, of course, and then he's staying out in this, like, sweet house pad in Malibu. And I'm like, I... I you're having a vacation. And I'm, like, going crazy. Oh, you have paid for... You went to that one? He went to he one went of those. To it, yeah. One of those, yeah. yeah he was there with Trump Jr. <laughs> yeah, and that doesn't work. Or Andy, did. it does he not work. for three work. days, three, three, three months. months. No, he went to a month in Malibu, and then like another two months at this food and fitness rehab facility in wow. Tennessee. And they it were was Lindsay Lohan or something, huh? Victory Outreach. They say Victory Outreach, huh? Oh, no, this ain't no victory uh, outreach. This is like, no. dude, man, this, this is this is, a, this is a way so somebody is saying, you know what? I'm gonna make a rehab and rob rich people. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly Hollywood star. You know what it is, though. It's it's their treatment can't be the same as the treatment I got, it's man. The no, no, no. The no, only no, treatment no. that works is like Jacuzzis. hitting bottom. No, it's like it's like <laughs> sucking a dick in in Skid Row. That's rehab. Falling down, falling down, and having your whole family shit on you. It, it's the best rehab. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. everybody bro. leaves your ass, but when you have money, Man, nobody's you have leaving eight, you. If yeah. I had eighty G's to go to rehab, bro, I ain't going to no rehab, bro. No, we're gonna fucking spend it all in one day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> about three weeks. Yeah, no, yeah. it was it was a good time, probably. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. And at, at, at eighty. Thousand dollars for for three months, bro. You have enough money for somebody to sneak you in pills. Yes, the employees. You could buy off the employee yeah, for pills. It doesn't work. I, th- but the thing is, is, you were saying about them. The somebody re- all they're doing, they're preying on the families. Oh, totally. Because I think it's at all levels of people's uh, amount to be able and to pay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For them to say that they're going there. So the families, like, them. like there was one family there that their son was there, and I don't think they were a super rich family, but they would pay any. And if Probably for me too, if my child is, I, I am going to take whatever measures I can. I would sell my house to get my kid sober and right with. And you don't understand the kids sitting there going, as soon as I get out of here, yeah. <laughs> it's back on. And the family's desperate. They lose everything. Families are desperate, man. Like especially when you like when you quit doing anything. Like the f- anything that you're into that's not into drugs, your family will be supportive. Like you come out, oh, he's into finish. Let's get some fishing poles <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, I man. Pedro, eh? I read a sad it. story, man. Like uh, Chief Doro Gates, his, his he, fucking son was a fucking crackhead, dog. A fucking crackhead. That's why he came out and said that. Um, that um, uh, weekend weekend partiers should go to prison yeah, because they're yeah. the ones that get um, people like my son and people like me addicted because we want to party all week. These guys only party Saturdays. Yeah, Fuck go that. Back to work on Monday, dog. So, uh, so he said that weekend partiers should get more time than people who are addicted. He said his son will That's come on. That's weird. I never heard him say that. That's a weird. Yeah, he said that. Uh, to make. That's crazy. Yeah, he's cra- he's crazy. He was crazy. He was a little crazy, man. Because so his son he made that decision. Yeah, to go. So, yeah, but you know you gotta stay on yeah, I know. Yeah, so did um, so did that guy from the in the heat of the night. He said that too. 
man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Archie Bunker Ar- said yeah. that. Uh, yeah, he got his son arrested. And so did um, Michael. Uh, uh, son Michael Douglas. I mean, no, no, no. Martin Sheen got Charlie Sheen arrested. That was the time he got clean. He yeah. got him out. He got him clean because he went to jail. And, and, um, oh, was Michael like, yeah. Douglas' son got busted yeah, for stealing so and being yeah. all on, on He's drugs. He's been too. in bad trouble, man. That's, it's interesting. Like, every, I feel like everyone in our business were so susceptible to it because, like, you're saying our schedule and everything's accessible. Like, when I get to go on the road now, when I go, I'm like, people put joints in my pocket. Like, all kinds of things are happening. I can get laid. Like, and it's not. It's not like. It's not like it was before. I mean, I was going on the road uh, with dragging my kids across the country, and now I'm like, I have no kids. I have no responsibility, and I'm just like. Ah! And none, ah, none, none, none of these funny. DJs, none of these these doormans, none of the fucking security guards these clubs are discreet. They stay discreet. They're not. As soon as you buy weed, oh, you want weed? Because the last guy wanted coke, and they give you the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. They give you the name. Yeah. They give you the fucking name of the <laughs> last person. Like yeah. you never asked for the name. You don't give a fuck about who bought coke off you, but they give you the name. Like you never ask. They don't even need the WD. I'm sure, man. Go get Rodrigo one of diet pills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we so find out everything about week. each other. They yeah. tell you everything. These guys don't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. Uncle, the last guy, bro, he got crazy. Felipe. How crazy? He stopped calling me. <laughs> <laughs> My phone was hot like yeah. a money counter. Can't trust anybody, dude. No. Like, yeah, there's, the, there's, there's a lot of idle house. time, though, too. Uh-huh. When there's when there's nothing to do and you're stuck in Jacksonville, Florida all week. and, and You're kind of like a rock star for a yeah. week in Jacksonville. But the, with because, all this downtime. Yeah. Like, you perform You can for, only eat so many pizza rolls. I, yeah. <laughs> all you need <laughs> is a good bed and some good pillows, though, man. Oh, imagine, oh, of course. There's lots to you do. Know, but what if oh, the, no, you could argue with the front desk when I have a good AC. <laughs> <laughs> it's lots to do, but if you're if that's your grind and been your grind for years, it's so easy to go. You know, I'm just gonna oh, distract my mind with a few pills, There's or a few drinks, like so you're or whatever. Running, you're trying to get the documentary done. Well, the documentary. Done it well, the documentary is mostly done. It's going to go through one more phase of. You edit. own all the footage, or somebody holds the footage. I own all the footage. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, although it was reported in this um, tabloid, The Blast, about two weeks ago, that the footage is all gone. Yeah, I was reading that. Did that's you see why. That? But it was after you already said you had the footage. And I was like, wait, she just told me she had the footage. Isn't I wonder what this is. I thought it was new. I news. I yeah. think, I think news. it's. I thought it was all new. So Zane News. I think it's the manager. Well, because that was a court date. I think it was the manager because he had an additional copy of the hard drives, which he believed were the only copy. So he and he refused to return them to the state and claimed he lost them. So because hey, I was thinking uh, any between, filmmaker would have always had you a backup. I, <laughs> between you and I, whoever listens to the podcast, you know, I might not get booked to again. It's all right. <laughs> but we were we were all there hanging out at that club over there, right in Nashville, uh-huh. and they were all crying, right? They were all crying. We're gonna say no names. Yeah, man, she been trying to keep the dog. And like, and, 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 <laughs> I, and I want to open, open my mouth and go and say, what the fuck do you care? You're not, you're not married to this person. Yeah, you, you owe nothing. No, no, there's no bloodlines for you. Stop fucking whining and crying. The doggy? Yeah, they were, cr- like, we were in, they, we were in Zane to Nashville, and they were all there. They were they're all, all mad at me. They were all crying. They all she, think- she didn't even, she didn't, she was trying to keep the dog. Like, who, who, who deserves the fucking dog? My children fucking actually cry were. babies, huh, bro? Everybody owns a stake in his life. Dude. You were there, right? Fucking oh, cry oh, baby, right? right. There, I, I, I got, I got my juice. And I got my weed from them, and I, and I took off. But I want to hear a bunch of whiners here crying. Aw, the dog was really sweet. I, my kids wanted the dog, but I gave it to the guys who, um, they, they, there's an organization, they're like Big Paws, that did all the, um, they, they got the dogs licensed to be service animals. Mm-hmm. These guys, the, when I went to Nashville the first time, one of them showed up at my house f- and stayed with me for two nights, helped me clean out the storage unit, helped me do like, so much stuff helped me break open like our safe had run out of batteries like he he jackhammered like this guy was like he was like a god showing up to help me and then a few months later another guy from the same organization flew to nashville i had keep in mind i had no money i gave him my last thousand dollars cash rented a penske truck and this guy drove the truck for me he helped pack it up drove it across the country and helped me unpack it when it came to la with the stuff we wanted to keep from the house those are the guys that got the dog and that dog is a service animal what this, these dumbasses in Nashville that helped Ralphie get his drugs want the dog <laughs> and they're crying? The dog doesn't belong to them and it and shouldn't. That's so funny. They're so hey, mad. You drug know, dealers always feel entitled stuff, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
For real, man. Anybody who party with you feel entitled. Like, even like, like, shh. After last comment, Stanley, no phone calls, eh? You know why? Fool, I sobered up, dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need your fucking stepped on coke no more. Everybody wants oh a little God. peace, man. Well, I tell you what, if you die before me, then none of these assholes coming to your funeral. <laughs> I'll have people at the door, I'll have pictures. No, what if you, you die before me? <laughs> That's on you then. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you die before me, oh. that's what I ain't gonna let We're any going of those out together. assholes in. If you die before me, I'm gonna have that lady, Miss White Funky Fest, sing um. Please do at my can funeral. Can you work it? Please do. I would be honored for that. In the moo moo, eating a corn. I want people to have fun at my funeral, me too, but man. I don't want I don't want uh, assholes there. At your I want people to have a you got a lot of people fight. in your past that I want to beat up. Well, I want I want someone to die in a, in a duel at my fight my my funeral. <laughs> well, maybe I'll duel. And then the winner <laughs> will keep something. Who would it be? The winner. <laughs> they're they're just looking for your that ashes because you know, there still might be some drugs in yeah, there. Yeah, they might want to snort. When um <laughs> when you when uh, Ralphie passed away and then you went through a divorce, um oh man, so much so much bad stuff was written about you. I remember I, I read one and I said it said, just said. Paid. Oh my God! What? No, go, because you were going through a divorce, and then and then Ralphie passed away, and then and then, and then uh, I guess one of the right, one of the people in the bottom were the oh, commenter, oh. probably one of Ralphie's oh, drug dealers. Oh, on the bottom of the thing. Probably one of Ralphie's drug dealers. Wrote that I got. Paid. She goes. She got everything. Well, some people. You know what? I would have liked ch- him to live and had child support and spousal <laughs> support. That would have been the better route for as far as the divorce. A little catch gone. with the kids. You know. I, I don't I don't understand why anybody look I was with him for 17 years the last couple of years of his life he was really sick and we all know how it ended so anybody who says that I just I recognize that they're sick and and some of those guys oh my god the guy where Ralphie died at his house he tried to keep his car oh, wow. like crazy stuff that, fucking opener man yeah but he kept his car. I had to fly to he Vegas. He helped a lot of people out too, though. Ralphie helped everyone. I, I met people that come up to me and say, oh, you know, Ralphie may really help me. His nephew, bro, the guy that, that works for the news in somewhere. In Chicago, I think. In Chicago. There was a, 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 a guy, a, he came out and he said that, yeah, man, my, my, Ralphie May is my uncle. Oh, no, it was down in the south. It was uh, the college you did. I did a college in... Uh, in um, Alabama? No, no, no. It was Arkansas? in Arkansas. 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 Yeah, 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 Arkansas. It was a kid there. Uh-huh. And, then, and then Ralphie, he said that Ralphie may help them a lot. And then met another guy that said like, yeah. And then like, I mean, I mean, sh- I mean, I mean waiters. He goes, man, Ralphie May was the only guy that gave me cash. He goes, none of these fucking waiters, none, none of these comments ever tipped me. So you and they started naming you, Joe and Ralphie <laughs> are the only one that took care of me. Yeah, from Ralphie's that to give him like comedians. Ralphie Way was, was, was kind of too, in a way like too generous because like if an opener was like, like if an opener will start giving him a sad story, there's a lot of these fucking assholes. <laughs> Ralph yeah, will give him a little, little extra and shit for, no, for doing nothing. Yeah, but no, no, he was really. Like the general. Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, that's so funny. I. But their teeth. Yeah. The, uh, you know, they say we're carnival workers before, bro. <laughs> He took care of are. everyone. <laughs> but like, People took advantage of Ralphie, bro. But like in the end, the generosity. The generosity. Yeah, you see it with a lot Not of me, comments. but I, a lot of comments. No, like, like even Gabriel. They find out that this guy, oh, he gave me a thousand bucks. Oh, he gave me 500 bucks. So they'll go up to somebody with a sad story. <laughs> and then, oh, dude, here you go. This is all I got. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like you have that disposable cash. So it's like, you know, just a couple licks, whatever. It's not going to bug. But. People take advantage. Yo, of so much. You know what? Here's the crazy thing. Crazy. All of this. Ralphie just put fat joys in my pocket at the airport, bro. <laughs> yeah, he did. But you know, it's like <laughs> I it. it's so rude because it like, is rude. All, no, no, but not only that, but like for 17 years of him doing that, he and I were together. Like if we go out to dinner, I always, it's a very sexist world. If, if people, if you go out to dinner together and somebody puts a check down and he takes the check, I was like, thanks Ralphie. Thanks Ralphie. But the truth is, is Ralphie, I work, we worked together for years. So like I always, eh, whatever. But as soon as shit hit the fan, all those people, Smash Brothers, Chad came to me crying. He was literally bawling, you know, big ass Chad with the bald head, yeah. like intimidating motherfucker. He's crying and he says i'm living in a shack behind my uncle the shack brothers the shack <laughs> brothers is this dad like a hardcore contractor that makes a lot of money he was i don't know but Word this was his story was that he was living in a shack and he was crying because he had just split up with his wife and he needed work desperately and i said look 
I'll, I'll get you out on the road with Ralph, but there's two of you, so it's going to cost like a lot more. So it's just going to be the feature money for the two of you, and you'll have to share a hotel room. Can you deal with that? And he was like, yes, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. He's like wiping tears away. And then wow. na- and now wow. I got him the gig. And then when things went bad, he was literally Turned hashtagging horrible stuff about me online. And I'm like, Chad, you know, yeah, I was yeah, forget, friends bro. with you. I, I had him to my you, house. Bro. Like I never did one thing to any of them ever not one of them and gabe in in vegas when ralph died i call him i'm like i'm i hadn't talked to him in three years because you know when divorces happen people split up and take friends sides. go Some with friends. Take friends but then mm-hmm. i fa- they go with the cash they go with the cash but course, i figured yeah. things would settle right i figured eventually it all simmer down and then we'll all be friends again because that's what happens bad blood eventually goes good again right so i'm not gonna ralph can have them for now and and we'll worry about it later but when he passed, I called up Gabe and I was like, well, you got to live my nightmare because I always thought it would be me to find him. And I'm so sorry for you. That's really sucks. And I, then I, and we got into conversating and I said, look, um, the memorial is going to be on this particular day. And when you come out, just what did he like? I'm assuming he had a suitcase or whatever. I'm sure you want to get that out <coughs> of your house. So just this is the I, guy he stayed with. Yeah, uh-huh. this is sad. And I was like, what, whatever you want, like. What, who wants to if somebody died in my house I'd be like take this shit get yeah. out of here you go. so the memorial and right before the memorial then I called him again I said listen um, this might not seem important to you but if there's like his cologne or something like that is in the bathroom make sure to keep that because August wants his daddy smell so he shows up at the memorial with a baggie and he hands me the cologne I was like oh my god thank you so much for remembering that means so much to me I guess the suitcase is in your car we can transfer it and he goes no I didn't bring it and I was like Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. This, this is Ralphie May's suitcase. His suitcase. They go. Don't worry about this it. Is the guy whose house he died in. And don't worry about it. I'll Damn. I'll get it from you whenever the time is right. It's cool. Like this isn't the, my concern. The next day I fly to Nashville and I get off the airplane, get to my house, and I I look for the car, and I'm like, where's the car? Because it was a Denali. It was our tour vehicle. No, I can't find. It. I call the lot where the bus used to be, and I was like. Do you have my car? No. And I can't find it. And I'm calling, calling, calling. I get a tip off from somebody that it's at Gabe's house. And so I start texting Gabe and he won't get back to me. And so then I call um, my attorney. I'm like, I think my car is at this man's house. So then hit my attorney calls. Another attorney who calls Gabe all of a sudden Gabe texts me. Yeah, I do have the car. So I call him. I said, um, I need the car because my car that I was driving in L.A., was the only thing that wasn't locked in probate. I had zero cash. I had to sell my vehicle, so I had enough money to feed, buy groceries, literally no money. Um, and I need that car so that I have something to get around town in. When are you going to bring it out? Because Ralphie's brother flew to Vegas to pick up his ashes with his nephew and his stepsister. Any one of them could have driven it out. You could have driven it out. I need the car. And he goes, well, this was back in October, maybe the end of November, December. And I'm like, fucker you're not gonna give me back my car like you, you you were stealing my like this is crazy so that weekend i flew home got on an airplane i put the kids in sleepover woke up at like 4 a.m the next morning flew to vegas four police officers met me in a gas station escorted me to his house they knock on his door with their stick and i and he doesn't come to the door so i have the extra set of keys i put on the car alarm in the garage he turns off the car alarm they're knocking i turn on the car alarm he turns off the car alarm the third time he comes down and he gives me the car and the suitcase and I drive Fuck. back home through the desert. Fuck these dudes up. <laughs> this is where he died. God. This is one of his friends. And you know what? I don't have. I knew why that piece of shit never booked me at th- <laughs> for that show, bro. Wait, he's the guy the that dirty. booked that show? Yeah. The Dirty. Are you serious? Yeah, Gabe yeah. Velasquez, whatever his name is. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, The Dirty Show, which I don't. I mean, look, here's the thing. Gabe and I were friends. Like, I have no gripe with Gabe. Look, he's a mold inspector. This was his greatest moment in a comedy. Mold inspector. <laughs> I think so. I think that's his day gig. I don't think it's a problem. How like, can mold inspect mold? <laughs> <laughs> the thing, guys. I, you Double know, I, I honestly wish him on, and this, I, I've been in a lot of therapy, so I wish I him the best. I never the guy. I wish him the best. We don't know but him once. But you know what? Look, the, you know, here's the thing. That was his greatest moment in life, right? Is comedy. Like, it was opening for, like, Ralph, he got to do things that he never would have gotten to do if it wasn't for Ralphie. Wear so, suits. <laughs> wear suits and get on stage. But like, come on, you don't do that. Like, I'm no matter how bad you think I am as a human being, I'm still a single mother. I'm a single mother with two young kids, and my like, Ralphie just passed away. Give me back my fucking car. Like, what that? What are you gonna do? Strip it? You don't have the title. Like, oh, I guess he'd sell it for five hundred bucks to sell (laughs) cocaine. You saw that? You sold it to me. (laughs) Yeah. And and Buddhistly wait for it. They mowed a month. (laughs) That's crazy, man. You know, people people on the outside though, they always think they know. Like. 
I, I'd seen, honestly, I'd seen comments that, you know, gold digger, all yeah. this stuff. <laughs> Who gold digs after 17 years? That, like, people say that about me when you would post pictures of us on your Facebook, usually, because they just didn't know who I was. And they would think that I'm only with you for the money. Like, they didn't realize I was with you when you, you for know, when you had the grilled cheeses <laughs> and you had nothing. <laughs> when we, were, we had roaches all in your, in your cabinets and everything. Yeah, and like, roaches. you know, you took my last $10 of gas money for drugs. And what, like, those things, like, yeah. those little things, uh, yeah, gold, you know. Gold like, diggers don't <laughs> stick around. We don't, those gold diggers don't stick around. But I would, you still get that. That phrase thrown I at get you. it all the Where'd time you the because car? it's so rude. Would you go get the car? That's <laughs> because with social media people, man, like they, fucking act like they own a sake. And that's they own form, a piece of you. Another form they of uh, entitlement. Man. Hey, well, man, but these, I'm not saying like most of these guys, but hey, they were all getting fat, bro. Oh, fool. They were getting fed, right? Oh, all dude. of a sudden, bro, their, their milk is gone. Oh, dude. They're running around like little babies. They straight yanked that shit, dog. They're like, what the fuck? A piece of us lost too, you know. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Yeah, they Let's want relax. a little piece. I can't believe can we they kept this car. Kill yourself, Can we, can yourself, a, can we have a little wait for my wallet? How oh about all the God. tribute shows that happened after oh that? My oh, my God. God. There, was one in, there was one in, in the South. There was really? one. No, no, the one in Nashville. Oh, my God. The one in Nashville. So they're the Nashville people. Oh, the who's who? So I had to go to court <laughs> that week in Nashville. They ran two tribute shows <laughs> to Ralphie while they simultaneously suing the estate i had to go to court that week in nashville while they were making money off of ralphie so basically they're suing ralphie the while they're using show? his yeah. no name why were they suing him the, oh it's like the the it's probate it's this the, like so if you go back did and he you, owe them or something no huh? i i don't look i it, there's still one more case pending and no because no he, they, he passed an intestate. Do you think Ralphie but owed, they're saying that he he owed them something? I'd say I'm trying. To, okay, so or like future that's going to take some. Okay, no. So <laughs> the manager's claiming that he's owed back commissions. He also claimed that he never gotten paid, which is bullshit because I found checks that he gotten paid. But he's claiming back commissions. But Ralphie had a different corporation. So the corporation that he had, that's there's didn't no money him, in the know, corporation. Yeah. So even if even if it's justified, but here's the thing: Ralphie's dead. You're still suing Ralphie. Like, and you're suing Ralphie's children. So, and then you're throwing a, so even if it is justified, which I don't think it is, okay? But even if it is, <coughs> you're suing him while running a tribute show with his name, making money off of him, and he's dead while his children are still alive. It's just like, it blows my mind. Like, if it's me, it doesn't matter if it was $10, $1,000, $50,000. I don't want any part of this. You go about your life, and we, we, we had a good run. You know what I'm saying? But like there's it's not worth it. There's not enough money in the world that would make it worth it for me to sue somebody who's dead. Yeah, that's weird. It's, it's it weird. sucks. That's my thoughts on it. But you're thinking somebody. about how much money it'd be worth to sue somebody who's dead. <laughs> how much money we won it all, huh? I don't know. I just I it's it's been a crazy ride. It's been really I interesting. I, I've learned a lot and I try and stay We learned like, a lot in the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of been interesting because Fucking the tears in. <laughs> the documentary like anybody who thought that I didn't have Ralphie's best intentions at heart I I was so adamant that he gets sober and that's so obvious in this project. So and the one hour special is such a gift for Ralphie because he was so goddamn talented and funny and I want him to have one more special. Plus, it helps keep the kids in their home and in their school. So that's. So cool. I remember, man, like um, I would say, like what was it four years ago, five before I got married, and I did your um, your um, your ten podcast, right? Perfect yeah. ten. Yeah. We're still running that. The I'm still 10. keeping it going. You come back. And then um, you and I, we, we were talking. To, that's when you first told me. I didn't even know that uh, you and I were talking in the parking lot about Ralphie, right? After the show was. We had a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And then you really broke down. I never told anybody that conversation. I mean, I, I told Lisa when Ralphie I think passed I cried. Away. You did. Yeah. And you were very sad. I, I remember, like, I wish I could have done something, you know, but there's nothing you could do, nothing. you know. And you, cause you had told me, you know, that it was sad because he, he's, he's, he's abusing those pills, chewing on them, and, and I'm all, all the time fighting on the internet. And then, and but I, she was saying also that he was there in the house, but not, but there. not there. Yeah, he was there, but like not there. Like he was just so removed from everybody. He would come from like being on the road about sixteen weeks, and then like be at home on the couch, but, but not it, really interacting with yeah. people. Like, yeah, I mean, to be his size alone, never mind the prescriptions and and other substances, just to be like physically that size to try and move that weight it's around, hard every day. Oh my God, everything. He fell once, Rodrigo, right? 
He uh, fell all the time. Rodrigo said he fell once. There was a one time, I don't know if this really happened, but uh, I don't know if Rodrigo told me the story, but um, somebody said that somebody gave him, um, or maybe there was a, it was a lie someone made up to cover up the Oxy story. He said that somebody showed up and gave uh, Rafi made this humongous chuba chew. Well, that was the whole thing. A big in, loaf. In, in, uh, in Denver oh, he that, he ate, that he ate, and, you know, they, he was all messed up from that. But you know. I don't think it was Cause the he had, pot, Because no. Yeah, because he, he had to go half a loaf, and the next day he fell on stage. Uh, no, the same night. I'm, fell I wasn't stage. with him there, but um, that was when things were pretty rough. Um, but he definitely, I, 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 I don't know what was in his bloodstream, but, I mean, I'm, can't imagine it was just cheap but that cheap those are strong too Fuck yeah yeah but he, he had like but, a big one though like a giant side at the side of the bottle of water yeah i'm sure i'm sure yeah he was messed up and yeah like there was it's just sad <laughs> yeah he used to get stuff from everybody he's there was one guy it's interesting there was this one guy nick his, you can go on his facebook page this guy nick came at me um, on Ralphie's Facebook page because when I launched. So there's been a couple of people who, the gold digger people or the people who are mad at me, blame yeah. me for his passing right now until they realize that's bullshit. But anyways, he wrote me a message on, on Ralphie's wall that, like commenting that wasn't very nice. And I just took the high road and I just said, Nick, I hope you like the special when it comes out, that kind of thing. But this is the same man that was friends with Ralphie who had sent um, a bottle of pills through the mail to him. And I only know that because there was a package that came and I didn't know what it was, but the, you know, somebody opens a package and they throw the rubbish in the trash. And then Ralph flew to Tennessee the next day. When the assistant came and picked him up, he drove him directly to the hospital because he couldn't stand up. He was like falling over. And um, I wouldn't, we tried to figure out what was in his system. So I dug through the trash and then located the same guy. And I found him and called him and said what was in there. And he said it was oxycodone and some other stuff. And so that's the Fuck. same person who's attacking me on Facebook for trying to launch an Indiegogo campaign to create his one-hour special. And I didn't write him back on Facebook because I feel like Facebook, he probably has friends, family, his work or whatever. But I almost, it took me all the control in the world not to go. Do you remember the time you shipped him oxycodone in the mail? Maybe you shouldn't be coming after me. <laughs> So, right, put him on blast. Like yeah, so I guess I'm kind of blasting him on Do here right now, but it takes a lot of work to figure drug out. Drug dealers always see that your friends are. Oh, dude, it's fucking enablers, though. Yeah. So, me, like, drug dealer the mechanic, bro. I'm not going to invite you for a party because you're always dirty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You were trying to get, get one on me, dog. Well, that one kid who you partied with for days around New Year's there Eve. There you go. <laughs> Juice's cousin. That little guy. You called Al Pacino. You called Scarface all the time. Is that but the one that was, you were saying? That no, no, he didn't. No, he, was, one? he was like uh, 18, 19. He was a kid. Earth, man. He was a kid, but then they came with you. To the they show in Ventura, yeah, I knew, no I knew, I knew why you invited them. But <laughs> you, the only guys I watched with their car. But you had a contract, <laughs> so you had to be on stage, and you were messed up for days and before that. So I was like, you got to get it together and make it up there. So uh, I think I took you up there. They drove behind in their car, and oh I was like, God, motherfuckers, dude. these guys are following him with drugs. Like I know, I knew why they were in tagging vultures, along. They're following, but you I mean, like, he's invited no, they're, they're, them for a reason. Oh, okay. They were in like. Uh, he goes, listen, man, we can't go together, man. So you guys got a caravan. And yeah, he said we coke. can't go together because basically I'm the bad person. I'm the mom trying to make him get to his job, you know, making sure he does his thing, right? So I felt like a bad guy there because I'm, I'm the buzz kill. Oh, my God. Right? I, I, I was, was the bad guy. Yeah. What the fuck? Buzz so I'm, I'm right the here. buzz killington here. But he had to make <laughs> his gig. You had no money. We had no. We were living check to check at that point. You were not headlining everywhere like you are now. And... Uh, so this was very important that you make this show and so you did it and then we're, we're back at that stupid buffet line because it was the one of those nights where they had rice and beans and food mexican food right at the club and that oh, guy book new year's day bro new year's day Damn. and that guy's day, next to me that the little kid drug dealer Hungry guy not food. even drug dealer he just had the stuff he was the, the party supplier so we're standing there and uh we're standing there piling up our plate and I said you know he is not going to want to hang out with you when he starts getting sober he's like what he's never going to be sober <laughs> yeah I'm all make sure I just he's gave like a bump. what <laughs> I said if you I said if he dies at your house I'm taking the cops right to your front door that you're the one you're the one where he died he said oh Felipe is a big boy I think he can make his own decisions <laughs> 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 I said I said all right motherfucker 
<laughs> so we'll see how this all Behind goes down. Scenes. We'll see. Wow. <laughs> and then he stayed away from me the rest of the night. He was all scared. And then he was like, he kept calling me ma'am the rest of the night. Wow. Like he was all scared. Senora. But oh, the fucking piece of shit. They don't care. None of them care. I get. I told that thing to that guy, that white guy, Charles, down down uh, downtown too. I said, "You're fucking white trash piece of shit." <laughs> and I said, he to put the cook in the microwave. Come on, fucking Charlie, to make you softer. And then that guy didn't understand why you didn't call him after everything was after you were sober either. But, uh, uh, damn. But they're, I, they're all like, "We we used to party with that dude." But I knew where he where he was too, and Aww. I was like, "I knew you were hanging out over there, and you had to make that taping, that Gene Pompa show, right, the big show, and that was like more money than we had made in." months and I said look he has to work or he's gonna lose a lot of money and make a bunch of people mad everybody's calling me where is where is he where is he and I knew where you were and I said I said everyone read about <laughs> polishing his shoes bro yeah. everybody's ready to do this show and then you showed up somehow killed it for two shows in a row and then I came down there a mess I was such a mess I hadn't eaten in I think two days I took a shower bro and I still felt dirty bro I got down there and I. I was took two showers. My and I was still sweating alcohol and drugs, and my eye was still alert. Oh, you looked bad, man. I was like, they they were putting makeup on me. How do I look? (laughs) How do I look? But then. When do I go up? But then finally. He said, oh yeah, Voodoo was there. Lisa was so happy to see you. She said, fucking finally. She was so no, tired. No, I had of, one beer. She was so tired of worrying about where the fuck I was. Yeah. If I was alive for the last two days, that she finally Aww. collapsed. I had one beer and I passed out like somebody roofied me. Because I had <laughs> finally, like, was able to relax. I knew where he was. I knew he wasn't dead in a gutter somewhere. And I, and I had... I had no food in my stomach the, the, either. I'm not so. sure those two lingers were still hanging around. The lingers were hanging around. And I think I told you in Chicago. I, I tricked I, those didn't fools. Didn't I point I you? I looking for them. Didn't I, point, <laughs> didn't I point them out to you uh, in Chicago? <laughs> and I said, those pieces of shit right I there. Wa- I walked they're his outside. suppliers. They're the Hardy Boys, bro. Yeah, yeah. there was the Hardy Boys. I walked I knew. them outside because I had a pass. Then I'm all later, dog. And I went back. <laughs> they couldn't get back in. Those fools were mad. No dog. way, See, dog. See, there you go. See? Wonder Twin Powers. The wonder you're still here. Those fools were mad. For real? You psyched them out I psyched him out. How, dog? dog? I'm like, hey, let's go outside, dog. Fucking, because, you know, I have weed. And fucking, then I'll show you what I got. And then, all right, yeah, but we got other shit. I'll check this shit out, dog. So I did the whole, the the mad little swoop, fool. Deep, 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 all, ee, the fool, they have all the shit. Yeah. yeah, dog. But they were outside then. No, no backstage pass. I was ready, bro. That fool, like, that fool said hello to me like this, bro. When, when I was like, he, he said hello to me like this, holding a little sack. <laughs> Yeah, dude. That's that you, poured, you poured water on yourself that night, huh? Oh, yeah, he, yeah. After his, uh, <laughs> that I was shit, sweaty, bro. Did that shit ever air, fool? No, hell no. Gene she said that they're the producers were holding it on the shelf for something. I don't. Maybe he owed the money. He I don't know to the get his story. special on there too. Yeah. Oh, was all excited, huh? Yeah, dude. Yeah, Jerry was the, still in the band. That would have been a good show. Jerry was still in the band. What's up, fool? Where can they find the e fund me for the documentary? Indiegogo. So it's Indiegogo. on Indiegogo. You can go to my follow me on social media because I'm linking up on that on Facebook or also Ralphie's. It's still very active. His Facebook, his Twitter, his Instagram. I'm posting on there so you can follow. But just go to Indiegogo.com and type in Ralphie Mayor Lana Turner. And then also I have a one. My one hour special just came out. Oh was shit! Released. Oh hell yeah! On, oh yeah! Mm, lemonade. I mean lime. Lime. <laughs> lime. But it's, uh, but it's, no, no, not that. It's not actually that so oh. I wrote a song, but I've done. Oh. I have like all this content yeah. out but that just came back out on um to tv which is this new yeah. free app which is really cool and then also i relaunched perfect 10 podcasts so since everybody here loves podcasts you oh, should tune yeah. over to that it's just and what's your social media just my name just l-a-h you gotta remember the Lana. h-n-a turner t-u-r-n-e-r so you can find we all had, of that what's her name here right the lady karen something karen rontowski oh i love karen Karen's yeah we great. had on a podcast man she read his um Future. She read all of our cards. <laughs> She's great. <laughs> Karen's, I met they Karen. Loved her here, man. She's cool, man. Forever ago. Where'd you meet her at? I met her when I first started stand up in Texas. Where'd you start? In Houston. All right. I, yeah. The laugh stop, right? Laptop, yes. Yeah. The old laugh stop. With the old guy. What's his name? Babbitt. Babbitt. <laughs> That was a, that was a one swindler, bro. You know what? But he always took care of me. Mark you know what? How he many took care Babbitts? Of the though, have you met in uh, every every time I meet a new? There's a Babbitt like that works I at mean, every Anna club. Anna Babbitt, she was an agent. Yeah, yeah. She's your agent. There, but, our manager. But that type of person that sort of like becomes king shit at Turtle Island and treats everybody really bad, and then they end up in an insurance job because they're just like you know. I, but then everybody kisses their ass for the time when they're in that position. Yeah, Ralph. Um, 
the guy Babbitt, he, he, Mark Babbitt, he had the Wild, Wild, Wild West comedy tours, and he used to book all the oh, comedy yeah. shows back in the day. He booked Ralph here back in the days. No, he never really was into Ralph. But he booked he booked like um, Gabriel, Freddy Soto, and then um, he hooked up with Intercon, the Malashes. Joe Malash, Paul Malash. I, you know, Babbitt was really nice to me when I first started. He, th- this is a funny story because the first time I ever did comedy, like I paid, was from Babbitt. Like um, I was two months in after my first open mic, and he let me do a set on the main stage there. Um, and I walked off stage, and he put twenty dollars in my hand, and I didn't know what it was for. <laughs> and he goes, "I just paid you for your spot." And I, I at that moment, I was like, "I'm going to be a comic," because nobody had ever paid <laughs> me to ever stand on stage before. And I, I still make basically twenty bucks, but <laughs> I was just like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" So I owe a lot to him because he started. He really was the first person that ever like was like, "You can do this," even though I know he's like every like that story of that same person who's it's it's always a weird thing, right? In the clubs. And here in LA, where did you start? Comedy store, Laugh Factory? At first, um, the lot of spots at the Laugh Factory. Whatever between, whatever between uh, Ralphie and, and Jamie and Masada. Jamie, Jamie was always... Not sad, but he couldn't manage no more. You couldn't know, take it to the next level. <laughs> you know what? Jamie was good to Ralph. Really, really good to Ralph. And really, really good to me. I will never speak in a word about Jamie. And I haven't worked that club since Ralphie got kicked out. When Ralphie got kicked out, I got kicked out too. And Jamie over the years has said that I could come back, but whenever I start calling again, I don't really get spots there very much. But what, what I can't say a out? bad word because he left him. Um, when And then actually I heard another story from Jamie only maybe a year ago. He owe me money. That's what Jamie said. <laughs> always. And I, said, I thought he sued him for but money at no, one point. No, no. Oh, I thought and he did. I didn't even know that Jamie felt like Ralph had owed him money. So... I, I was surprised. I said, nobody, I've never seen an invoice or a bill or anything. So if there was money owed, I wish I'd have known. Like, that was years ago. And that was that. So, Could but, be an engagement party with the Laugh Factory. Right. And Jamie was a, had, I, like I said, I can't find a bad word to say about Jamie because he was always, and you know, here's the thing. Our business, it sucks because we're a human commodity, right? So, like, if you're dealing with Coke or Pepsi and then you leave Coke for Pepsi, like, that's that. You're done. Like, it's just a product. But we're a product. So when the product leaves you and goes to somebody else and makes them a lot of money, people get pissed. They want to, like, they're like death to you and death to your firstborn. I can't tell you how many people that's happened. Every time he switched management or switched whatever, the, the hate that came from him and then also, like, like I said, I don't get spots there anymore. I'd love to get back up there. It's like my favorite. Well, I think now he's so removed from the booking process too. I don't even. It's like oh, Jamie, yeah. yeah. I don't Jay know. Jamie does it now. Yeah, and Jay's cool. I've I've always been friends. Uh, friendly. I don't know. I just it's weird. I I don't know. I get plenty of spots right now, and it doesn't have to be at the factory. I'd love to get back up there because it's easy. But you know, what? I like it because I do a lot of shitty hard spots. Yeah. And that's why I'm fucking real strong right now. It's because I've been doing these shit spots for years. <laughs> Nudist gigs. I'll do whatever. I'm, I remember one of the good memories of you and Ralphie was um, when, when Dublin was around, and, and, oh, and yeah. um, that was Tuesday nights, and it was Halloween, and I, me and uh, Martin Moreno, G. Riley, and this guy named this, guy, this old comedy named Noah, and Martin Moreno, we walked from the Laugh Factory to the fucking uh, West Hollywood for the parade. And we, and we With Ralphie into, too. We, we, we ran into you and him at the Dublin. Oh, he was dressed like um, he was dressed like a baby, like a super baby. <laughs> he, had, he, had, he had the costume like superhero. a superhero. Oh, the superhero. Yeah, with a mask, and you were dressed up too. I think I was dressed as a superhero as well. Yeah. Like his sidekick. Yes. <laughs> I think I was like his snack. I was like cute, his side man. snack kit or something. <laughs> like, yeah, he was Superman, and I yeah. was his snack. He was Superman. Yeah, he was a snack. That's why people always <laughs> thought I was a gold digger, though. I mean, after he started making money, nobody before believed. before he was making money. Right, but when he started making money and he got famous, people just assumed that I was. Because what. I'm a crazy I'm crazy because I was with a broke fat not just fat but gigantically fat like I mean like it, d- it doesn't make sense so yeah. they assume the worst but th- like how could she be that and I look back and I go what the fuck was I thinking too because my mother hated him and she knew that this wasn't going to end well like cuz now I'm I'm a mother, and if my daughter was doing what I was doing back then, I'd be like, "I got to What the fuck is wrong with you?" Hell yeah. So, but I can see why people look at looked at us and thought that at times because they don't know me and they didn't know that I and they don't know him. They didn't know how yeah. special he was. So, how are the babies though? How are they taking it? Are they good? You know, it's hard because I I've been very proactive with them. They're in therapy. Um, they went to a bereavement camp this summer. Every kid at the camp 
has lost a parent or sibling in the last three years. My daughter goes to group. How how LA is that? I got my yeah. daughter in group. Um, my son is a little bit different than her and how he's, he's grieving. younger, right? He's younger and. If you rem remember, I said Rafi had the pul pulmonary embolisms years before. So Raf checked out on August when he was about 18 months old. And so August really didn't have the experience of having a father being active with him at all his entire childhood. And then he died. So it's a really big betrayal. Um, but we're working through it. And he was lit at the wedding now. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's just one year younger, but you know, boys mature a little more yeah. slowly when it comes to that sort of thing. He's angry, yeah. but he also, he, you know, he's got a little temper and he's got a little, he's, and he's funny. So, you know, I'm fucking them up sufficiently to be yeah. funny <laughs> through all of this. At least they've got a good sense of humor. But I don't know. I mean, they're, they're really good people. And I don't know what it's like to lose your father because I'm lucky. My dad's still alive and I talk to my, my parents every week just about it, sometimes a couple times a week. And they've been so supportive that I just think about how, what I'm gonna do when, I mean, I, I can't even imagine losing my father and I'm a, uh, I'm a woman. I just, that's, it just, it's beyond me. So I feel for, I feel, oh, this is so sad. <laughs> I, I know it's, a, I don't know what it's like to lose a father, but I know it's like to have a father who isn't there yeah. emotionally. Well, I think that can be almost worse. Yeah, that's worse. I think, I think that's worse. I mean, that, as a kid, I mean, I lost my dad twice because <laughs> he left when I was eight and then he died last year. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so, but as a boy, I think it's tougher because you don't have, I, like you said, you di he didn't have him this whole time. So maybe he was always hoping that at one point they would have this bond and then he never got to have that. They, you know, which is, yeah. And it was, it was really hard to watch, like, especially towards the last year, year and a half of Rafi's life, because that the no shows, he couldn't. So I had to get orders in place. That was a really big deal, and it was it really sucked. But the judge puts orders, so it's very clear what you can and can't do. Because up until I was able to get orders, it was really loose, and it was really, really, really hard to figure out what was going to happen because there was no, there's nothing concrete, especially dealing with Ralphie. So he, I was required one day a week to call him. That's it. And he, he couldn't even get on the phone. And then the visitations, he would come to L.A. He would be here. And we'd be waiting for him to show up for his visits, and he just wouldn't show up. Or I would send the kids to meet him, like at the Grove or wherever, and he wouldn't show up. And so the kids would come home and be like so disappointed because then they think something's wrong with them, right? It's like mm -hmm. even though they understand, oh no, it's not you, it's not you. The, the, how do you fix that for a child? Um, so yeah, that's it's fucked up. But a yeah. bit Ralphie, and I always have to defend Ralphie because he loved his kids yes he did he loved them so much and and i know that he wanted the best for them always it, it just the person got lost in the substances mm -hmm. and then sad it's not an uncommon story so waka waka funny what's funny. up fool? <laughs> what, you got, what you got what you got as far as what anything to add Oh, no, nothing, dude. We covered all. Thank you very much for letting, sharing your side of the story. Now we ha hear that opposed to all the baloney that we're hearing from, crying, from, dog. from one other side. So oh, we could talk for hours. you have shows hours. coming up soon somewhere? Um, I'm doing Albuquerque at the end of the month. Where at? Um, the Vault. The Vault. The Vault. And then I'm doing Kansas City in like two months. I'm easing my way back out on the road because it's hard to leave the babies and such. But I'm doing Kansas City in like eight or ten weeks. And there's I'm headlining two of the nights I'm bumping down to feature. But I need to work. Yeah. And what's I, your um, Instagram? Just my name, L-A-H-N-A-T-U-R-N-E-R. -E and one more time, where can the people um, submit help well, out so with the documentary? I, I always say, I like to say it's not a donation as much as it is like being a part of something because I think of donation as like yeah. if I'm going to donate to something it's going to be for some like kid that's dying and needs my help but for I sure. so this isn't that this is like you can be part of something cool and get something cool if you go to the Indiegogo page there's, there's some perks. digital downloads there's t-shirts there's even his um, jackets I have two of his leather jackets for if there's any big fat boys that have money we gotta <laughs> they're like five grand but that's what they cost to make and then i actually put his orange jacket up there it's a joke i put it up for like 50 grand but if somebody wants it they can have it i just oh, the one that. in the photo in the yeah. the yeah. orange yeah. jacket yeah. i just said i just put it up there so people would talk about it but um but if somebody wants it they can have it it's just like stupid money but the other jackets are actually really like that's what they would cost and then um 
and so yeah so it's not so much a contribution as it is a participation in something really cool and then and then you can even get your name in the credits or you could have an associate producer's credit that's expensive but that's uh, somebody bought yeah, one of those so yeah so be a part of it you can you can watch it in a few months when it comes out and go i helped make that so hell yeah yeah cool good, good thanks guys what's up full shout out to lana turner and rodrigo torres and check out his yeah man podcast yeah and what's your podcast name again perfect 10 perfect 10 and check me out i was in that podcast too yeah we shot it under the tunnel we were on our subway that was fun lisa what, what was your podcast Are you gonna start a new podcast what's going I'm on i'm going to i'm going to good i i have to get it time but called, there she goes podcast. no it's gonna be called girl school but it's oh, gonna be all women girl i'll have lana on one day. yeah please yay girl school all right. All right. Bye. Thank you.